1993, the Coca-Cola company asked me to go back to Coke to become the first ever chief marketing officer. I arrived to find a budget that I was responsible for or, or directed in many ways of $5 billion on a worldwide basis. At the time, we were selling about 9 billion cases a year of soda. Uh, and in a very short period of time, we took it to 15 million cases a year. That's a lot of, a lot of soda. Um, the budgets never increased. What we did at the time is we tried to rationalize the spending and making sure that we understood exactly what we were getting for what we were spending. We were operating in 193 countries around the world with no way to have just-in-time communication with the different markets around the world in order to make sure that we had a rigid strategy with flexible tactics, you know, something that allowed us to have a brand or a series of brands that were implemented on a worldwide basis consistently, but at the same time were communicated in the local culture more so than the local language. I wish that in 1993, I had a product like ProChoice. When I ran into this uh, new technology, I kind of felt terrible, you know, that it only 15 years after I went back to Coke, this technology was available. If I had had this tool when I was there, it would have allowed me to talk to the field around the world, over 2,000 marketing professionals around the world, to be able to talk to bottlers, you know, which in a franchisee, franchisor environment, you're always trying to make sure that you have the clear understanding of what you're trying to do in the market. To be able to understand what retailers wanted, and lastly, to make sure that the most important people in the world for a business were able to contribute through their behaviors and their attitudes on what we were going to do next, which were the consumers. Well, marketing has become even more important than ever. I wrote 10 years ago the end of marketing as we know it, and I must confess that after 10 years, we're not any further uh, ahead of where we were than I, uh, at the time, complained in my book, The End of Marketing as We Know It. Finally, today, uh, everybody is coming to a realization that you gotta spend money to make money. That marketing, as I described it, is about selling more stuff to more people more often for more money more efficiently. How do you do it more efficiently? It's not only about the return on the dollars that you spend, it's also about the return on the effort that you spend. It is about precise communication. It's about relentless follow-up. Do you have a tool that allows you to do that? Really, it does not exist. Can you really segment the opportunity versus segmenting the consumers on what, what happened before? Broad choice, in my opinion, would enable those willing to really become scientific about how they go to market to become much more efficient and effective in getting return for effort and dollars spent. As you will see from looking at this tool, it will enable people to understand exactly where volume is happening and not happening, what programs or elements of a marketing effort and remember, marketing is whatever you need to do in order to sell more to more people, are actually working which are not. To correct, you know, in, uh, in real time what is going on and to be able to start establishing patterns that will allow you to then more, be more efficient on a going forward basis. The problem that we will face, or that we still face, is that all of us talk a good game with regard to measuring performance. We talk about return on marketing investment. A cottage industry has come up about how you go about measuring what you spend. And there's resistance in measuring what you spend. Let me say that if you actually were running a political campaign today, you need to understand where your vote is, where your intent to vote is. And you don't have to understand that for the long term. You've got to understand it for tomorrow, because the vote happens tomorrow. And you can't ask, even though we've had a couple of recounts, uh, for a re-vote uh, in the marketplace. The marketing of, of a candidate is a lot more similar today to the marketing of a product. You need to spend money in a political campaign to create intent to vote and to get people to vote, as we have seen in the last uh, Democratic primary and the Republican primary that ended a while uh, ago. The same thing needs to apply to marketing. Broad choice will give you the ability, if you want to really become scientific, if you want to try to spend less to get more, to understand exactly what it does. 
It will allow you to communicate with all of the constituencies in your enterprise to be able to make sure that everybody understands what's going on, when it's going on, and to be able to course correct as necessary. So I am a little bit sad that this didn't come up when I went back to Coke 15 years ago. It didn't come up uh, today, but thank God, ProChoice is here for those of you who want to become better businessmen and better marketers.